Welcome back to Fernie Farm, where every day is a new adventure and every episode is a step closer to mastering the art of farming. Today, we're diving into episode 3 of our beloved Grandpa's Farm. After a thrilling episode where we introduced new equipment and a sawmill, transforming our wood into profitable planks, we're ready to take things to the next level. So grab your farmer's hat and let's get started. So today we've got a couple of tasks on our cards. We're going to have to chop down as many trees and process as much wood as possible into planks because we do owe Peter down the road £65,000 for our beautiful new tractor. Now, we did waste a bit of money on our smaller tractor, but, uh, you know, it can be our little tiny workhorse. You know, depending on what we plan on doing, we might want to have some greenhouses or something like that in the future, which would require a lot of water um, and you know I don't really want to be wasting the potential of this tractor on filling up water so we do have a bunch of trees over here and there are trees all over our land so I think what I'm going to start doing is actually compiling these trees over here behind the lake and filling up our sawmill because well yes like i was saying we need to start making a lot of profit very fast okay because i don't want to leave pete too long in terms of owing him money i really do need to get some money rolling as soon as possible let's turn my engine off though so i don't waste any fuel okay so let's get our chainsaw out and start getting rid of these trees now we are going to have to start planting some trees at some point as well because we take around 30 months to grow oh no that's not good oh oh it's a good job that my forks caught that because that could have heavily damaged my tractor and we don't want that now do we um so i think i'm gonna have to um, maybe even start at the end and get this all chopped up and try not damage my tractor too much with these fallen branches. Like I say, there is a lot to do, there's a lot to get done this episode because we need to start making some decent money so we can pay off Peter. Uh, we don't want to have him waiting for too long um, for some money. Now we're going to cut these at around 8 metres each. Can I get there? Yes. Let's chop that there. Let's chop that little chunk off there. We might now be able to lift this up. There we go. Um, and we've got an 8 metre there. And that is more than 8 metres, that is. What are we doing? If I do this, can I like just get it to slide in? Ooh, we're getting there. Let's do that. Come on. I may have made a mistake having my tractor too close to it, but what am I going to do now is the question. Is it going to fall off? There we go. All right. Okie dokie. Let's get this uh, trailer filled up. Get this guy picked up. There we go. You know what? I might actually, rather than using my lumber trailer, because we are so close... I'm just going to drop them off into this entry point here for now. Okay, so that's our first tree sorted. So what I'm going to do actually is I'm going to get this sawmill started up so we can actually start making money as soon as possible. One of my handy workers, Martin, has gone and collected all of our wood for us. So if you're liking this series so far, guys, don't forget to hit that subscribe button, hit the bell icon, and don't forget to like this video and leave a comment and let me know what you are enjoying about this series so far. Um, if you have any recommendations on what I should be doing as well, please do let me know because I'd love to hear your guys' thoughts. Okay, so on to our second tree. I'm going to see if I can actually move this tree without having to cut it up. Because that would make my life ten times easier. Oh, God, this is heavy. I'm just going to clear out some of the smaller ones because I can just walk them over at the moment. I should probably actually turn off my engine. I think this tree might be a little bit too heavy, so I can't pick it up just yet. Well, I need to clear out some of this land as well from these bushes. 
But yeah, battery is a bit heavy. Let's just chop off a little bit off the end and see. Yeah, right, there we go. We can move it now. I might have to move my trailer out the way as well. Um, but I don't think we actually do need to um, to be cutting off all of these branches now because I'm pretty sure that the lads within my sawmill will be able to do it for me. So I'm just going to save myself a bit of time and have them cutting it up for me for now. All right, let's get Martin bring them in for us. Thank you, Martin. Now, there is a lot of manual labor going on today, but... We're going to have to do a, as much manual labour as possible because I don't think anyone's going to be too willing to um, help me move all of these trees. Can I grab it? There we go. I'll quickly move him. Right, okay, let's see if we can move this whole tree at once because if we can, then that will make our lives much easier. Right, okay, can we move it? Is there enough weight on my tractor is the question, really. Oh, I've left that in the way, haven't I? Right, can we at least lift it above it? There we go. Okay, right. Yeah, so I think what, what, what we're going to be doing is chopping down these trees as full trees. Whoa! Damn it. Well, we're going to try to do that, at least. Right, let's see if we can... There we go. Oof. That was fun. Right, okay. So it is quite early. I'd woken up uh, at 7 a.m. this morning. So I have a bit extra time to get some of these trees felled and processed through our sawmill. Because at £65,000, it's going to be tricky to go ahead and earn... I do have a couple of workers at the moment, Martin being one of them and Sean being the other. Sean is, is, is our delivery guy and what he's going to be doing is he's going to be selling the planks for us and we're going to be paying him around £100 per day to do that. I don't think you can actually pick these up whilst they've got branches on so I will chop these branches off and see if that makes a difference. Right, it does appear that it does make quite a bit of a difference. Until we get a heavier tractor or something to weigh us down on the back. Well, well this is going to be our best practice at the moment. Now, I was speaking to Peter and he did say that he does have a forestry machine and a planter, which he doesn't use. However, the forestry machine is a little bit out of our budget, but the planter is around £20,000, so we could technically get with using a planter, and it's going to cost around, I think it's around £50 per tree to plant, and we are going to have to plant these as soon as possible, so clearing some land will be vitally important for this series. You know, and luckily, because Peter did sell, uh, did loan us this tractor for such a cheap price we should be able to progress relatively fast with our farm now as well which is great to hear all right let's get this this one over to the sawmill oh go on drop it there we go but i would like to fill up as much as i possibly can because obviously that way we can then focus on other projects within the farm. So something else we're going to need is a stump crusher of some form. Now, I'm not sure what they're called, but they essentially allow me to get rid of these tree stumps. And I think that is probably going to be our first big purchase after. Well, we'll see about after, but... Uh, hopefully after we've paid off Peter um, and, and paid off this tractor because this tractor is quite an expensive one. Now we have saved a bunch of money on it though because the RRP of it is around a hundred, hundred and ten thousand pounds. It might be a bit more than that to be honest. So only paying sixty-five thousand pounds for it is a really good deal. So it's around ten o'clock at the moment. 10 a.m. so we still got quite a big chunk of our day to go which is nice to see so we should be able to get through quite a few of these trees and at least we're not having to take 
loads of trips down to the lumber yard down at the road to sell it all you know at least now we can make our own money from our logs now, i don't think i'm going to be able to move this with my bare hands or with my tractor as a whole so i will have to cut this one up into two this is like a 30 meter tree this one is so i'll cut you here so that i don't have to maneuver around that tree yeah i don't think i'm going to be able to move that let's <laughs> cut it up once more eh? okay so i'm going to go ahead and chop down a bunch more trees and fill up the lumber mill and i will see you shortly after all right well it's just starting to rain and it's just gone 1 p.m so i should probably actually go and grab some food for all the day because <laughs> i don't want to be working in this weather now do i um i think that the rain is actually gonna um, go away in an hour or so so i am just gonna go and grab some lunch and enjoy a quick munch so for my lunch today i had bacon and egg butty and it doesn't look like this weather is actually going to die off anytime soon so i'm thinking we might actually end up not being able to do any more work today unfortunately because we don't want to be working in this thunderstorm now do we well, on that note guys we do have quite a heavy load of wood in our sawmill now so once Sean starts delivering some planks to Heather just up the road, Heather is a furniture maker and she makes some really beautiful bespoke furniture. Now, once Sean starts delivering that to her, we should start making some decent money because she's basically said that she'll have as much wooden planks off as, from, as possible. She says that she wants some spruce, as much spruce as she can, but also I was asking her what would she like next, so what sort of wood does she often make her furniture out of. Now Heather was saying that pine is great, now peak pine she says would be even better, but you know it's hard to find and it's hard to grow peak pine in this geolocation. So, I think that when we do decide to start planting our trees, we will focus heavily on planting pine because that is what she makes most of her furniture out of. Now, she does make it out of spruce as well and oak and all of these other materials, but her best sellers are pine. Now, pine is much cheaper, so that makes a lot of sense to why. Good morning, everyone. Turns out that Sean had forgotten to um, go and deliver some planks over to Heather. So we haven't actually managed to um, to sell anything just yet. Unfortunately, we are still in the same boat as we were yesterday. Meaning we've got no money and we've got no means to actually earn anything. So I am going to be spending most of my day helping out in the sawmill and chopping up as much wood as possible to get some money coming in good morning everyone so today it looks like it's going to be a better day than yesterday we've got the sun up in the sky and i was checking the weather forecast we don't have any rain coming until around 2 or 3 p.m and it's only going to rain for about an hour so i'm thinking that maybe we should actually start thinking about mowing our lawns and potentially either creating some silage or some some balers so i am going to give peter a call and see if he knows anyone who's selling a mower of some form or anything like that so then we can actually get started so after speaking to peter he mentioned that there's this front header mower sat in the shop up the road and it's around nine and a half thousand pounds so i am going to see if i can get this delivered as soon as possible so he was saying he could do as this baler for eight thousand pounds now i think it's a bit pricey but for what we need it would probably be perfect because if we purchase a brand new one that's going to be around twenty five thousand pounds and after purchasing the, the mower we're not going to be able to afford it so i am going to buy this so I'm looking at getting this bale trailer too, which is around £5,000. Um, and the last and final thing we will need is a windrower of some form. Now, after speaking to Peter, he did say that he could loan me one for the day. So I think I might take him up on that because he does have one sat in his shed. But in terms of everything else, we do have our bale trailer 
our mower and our baler. So I did speak to the mower dealer and he did say that he could deliver it but it won't be for another two days. He's, he's fully booked up so I am going to have to go and collect that myself unfortunately. I will be back shortly. So here's my new equipment. I've got my mower, my baler as well as my trailer for it. Now I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to spend the day actually mowing the lawns and then hopefully by tomorrow we should have enough money to purchase a windrow. I don't think I want to lend one. Okay so let's get started and I'm going to focus on this field out back over here mostly because I have a load of land back here so it would make sense to obviously mow the biggest points first. Okay. I think that's the edge of my land there. I'm just going to do the perimeter of my land first. So then I have a good idea of just how much I need to do. I'll go up to about here. And I'll just go along this tree line as well. Now look at all the deers populating over there. Right, so there's a tree stump there. This is why we do need to have a tree trunk mulcher of some form. So we can get rid of these tree trunks. Ooh, there, was, there was a bunch there. Okay. Now I think we're probably going to need to plant some grass at some point because as good as this grass is, it's full of weeds, so it's not the highest of quality grasses. And I think that if someone's going to be feeding this to their sheep, they ain't going to want um, it to be full of weeds like this grass is. So I may even use this whole spot around here and plant this all up to be grass but have some better quality grass is my plan anyway. And I'm hoping I can get all of this field done today so then tomorrow we can focus on uh, windrowing and baling. And here comes the rain like I predicted. It is now 3pm I should probably go and have something to eat at some point because I really want to get this done before the before night falls to be honest because it'll be really hard to see during the night. I'm not too bothered about being 100% accurate because I will just let this grow back and then I can always re-mow it in a couple of months time. Obviously if I can get the chance to I may even plough this field and get a bunch of grass fields planted so we've got a better quality grass coming through here. It's probably not the best weather to be mowing in, but I need to get this done. So the rain has died off finally, and just like I was saying this morning, it should have only lasted about an hour. So I do think it's around 4pm now. I don't know, I haven't looked at the clock, so I wouldn't actually know what time it is. We are so close to finishing now. We've just got that one spot behind us, and we can say that we have mowed all of our lawn. Wow, this has been a massive job. It's taken me enough all day just to mow this lawn. I'm glad to get that out of the way. Let's go and drop off our uh, lawn mower. And I think it's time I took a bit of a break, in all honesty. Ooh, oh, no oh, dear. That was a long, busy day, that was. And that's a wrap on today's journey at Grandpa's Farm, folks. We had a bustling day, from the roar of the chainsaw cutting through timber to the hum of our new mowing equipment gliding over the fields. And let's not forget the satisfaction of seeing our fields all neat and tidy after a good mow. It's these moments that make all the hard work worth it. So next time on Grandpa's Farm, we're diving into the world of bailing and who knows what other surprises we'll uncover. Make sure you're subscribed and have that bell notification turned on so you don't miss out on any of the farming escapades. Thank you for joining us today. Until next time, keep those boots muddy and those spirits high. Bye.